Right, so a scandal has struck in Croydon East, heaven forfend, at the parliamentary selection for Labour's candidate, as claims of voting fraud have meant the entire selection process has had to be paused with immediate effect whilst the mess gets straightened out. The whole affair centres around allegations of candidate tampering, insofar that one candidate has been heavily favoured over all others, and this tampering, or the accusations thereof, have been aimed at the officials overseeing the selection. London Labour, once again, have become involved as they have imposed new officers on the constituency party, given that boundary changes are also happening here. And as per usual, they did this without members getting a say in the matter. But the issues haven't ended there, as the Labour Party and non-voter system is yet again being pointed at as a source of vote rigging, an accusation aimed at it before. And since an non-voter is owned and run by people with connections to Labour General Secretary David Evans, between that and London Labour itself being involved, does this go right to the top? Or is Croydon, the home of a non-voter itself, just more susceptible as a result? Right, so a Labour candidate selection in Croydon East has collapsed amidst allegations of vote rigging and rule breaking to favour one candidate over the others to a level that one official present said that nothing like this has ever happened before. Dramatic stuff. The allegations are that votes were cast on behalf of people without their knowledge and that membership data have been tampered with to Try and rig a desired outcome. Well, we've never seen that happen before under Starmer, have we? Desired outcome by a factional few. But when Labour, London Labour are involved, as they have been all over the country, not just in London, this might not surprise many people in the know at all. Starmer's regime have been using this excuse of boundary changes happening to push their own favourite candidates and try to do away with as many rotten lefty ones as they possibly can as well. Notable was London Labour's attempts to oust West Derby MP Ian Byrne, Labour's Mr. Right to Food campaigner, who despite his achievements in that, isn't starmery enough. And so candidate rigging in Croydon East might not be that much of a surprise. Labour have been forced to pause it though, issuing a statement reading, we are writing to inform you that as a result of complaints received by the party that require investigation, the selection process in Croydon East has been paused with immediate effect. This means that the Hustings meeting due to take place on Saturday has been cancelled, and any votes already cast have been voided. We will be in touch with further information in due course following the conclusion of our investigation. So who's investigating then, Damo, you might be wondering? London Labour. Oh, that'll go well then. They are the ones who issued the response to pause proceedings. Lots of trust in that, I'm sure, especially after they imposed officers to oversee things here. We didn't just select officers from within Croydon East. They've imposed three of their own. In fact, uh, two of them are particularly notable. Uh, Carol Bonner is one, a former ward colleague of suspended Croydon Council boss Simon Hall, uh, who with another councillor, Tony Newman, were suspended for their alleged part in the financial collapse of Croydon Council back in 2021. So she's got some stellar connections. And the other is a chap called Mark Henson. And I'll come back to him later because he's relevant. Now, the idea of London Labour with their reputation investigating this has been met with anything from disgust to outright fury. One member said, this is what comes of handing the running of a selection to unelected officers who, by definition, are not trusted by members. Any process not subject to scrutiny is liable to corruption. And the Croydon branch of Momentum tweeted out on this matter as well. They've said, if you want to fix something, don't get the most useless people imaginable on board to help you do it. Well, that seems to say it all, doesn't it? But let's not leave it there, because when it comes to candidate selections, the go-to place for such news on such things is former Channel 4 reporter Michael Crick's Tomorrow's MP's Twitter account, because he covers it all when it comes to parliamentary selections of all parties. But on this story, he's had a merry fit. In a series of tweets, he said, Exclusive, huge problems, including suspected fraud and allegations of large-scale tampering with membership lists in this Labour selection. Several complaints already made to Labour National and London Region HQs, especially over use of online votes. One Labour member has written complaining postal online vote has been requested in her name when she didn't apply for one as she intended to go to Saturday's selection meeting in person. The application used an email address which didn't even belong to her. The member's complaint continued. I am also inquiring if I'm the only person this has happened to as this has serious implications regarding vote rigging. Tomorrow's MPs has also seen evidence the membership list supplied by London office to the four contenders so they can canvass members has been tampered with. Dozens of members have had home addresses changed in ways which suggest systematic, not human error. A successfully selected candidate from a different Labour region, so not London, has texted me to say, the online voting is dodgy as hell, 
and the candidate added that with their selection, there was an unbelievable discrepancy between votes on the day and online votes. This is so serious that Starmer should step in and suspend the use of online voting in Labour selections, appoint an independent KC to investigate Croydon and past concerns, immediately freeze all online voting data history so that can't be destroyed or tampered with. Starmer should also insist that for Labour selections where the result would have been different had used had online voting not been used, then the selection is rerun. And I should stress there are many selections where voting online wasn't used at all. KC Starmer should appoint to investigate online voting and selections should investigate to see if one, online voters really applied for online votes, and two, online voters had their emails changed to emails that weren't theirs, and three, voters were fraudulently, votes were fraudulently cast in their name. Labour member I quoted earlier is Joanna O'Prey. She tells me she heard by accident she had an e-vote even though she never applied for one. And she says email address linked to that vote was false and it spelled her name Joanne, which she never does. And Joanna O'Prey says she was surprised to learn that she had any vote in the selection as she thought she'd left the party about a year ago. The implications of the online voting story in terms of data protection breaches could be huge and hugely costly for Labour. It's totally wrong that the London Labour Party is carrying out this investigation. The London Party HQ may be guilty of wrongdoing. It should be carried out by an independent person and probably the data protection registrar and the police. Several Labour activists have sent messages to say the procedures for Labour online voting in the party's selections are very lax compared with postal voting. Really does hammer at home, doesn't it? It does spell out how bad things are, doesn't it? Systematic tampering of membership lists implying it is intentional and not human error. A voting system that is dodgy as hell, according to an anonymous selected candidate. Starmer should appoint a KC, no less, to investigate the party's online voting system, a non-voter. Well, that's where I'll turn to next, since it seems to be intrinsic to the accusations here. A non-voter is an online voting system which Labour adopted in September 2020, early in the Starmer leadership then but was apparently done so without any competitive tender process and without any explanation as to why that was. At the time there was uproar about it, there were comparisons with what Labour were doing with regards to this to Matt Hancock handing out PPE contracts. Now I said I'd come back earlier to that chap Mark Henson, didn't I? An honour voter is provided to the Labour Party by a company called Henson IT Solutions. Well, I wonder who could be behind that. So one of the people London Labour has appointed to investigate the corruption going on in the Croydon East candidate selection is one of the people behind the online voting system being blamed by many members for being involved in rigging votes. We're in marking your own homework territory here, folks. But it goes further than that. Henson runs this company with his wife, Maddie. Maddie is a Croydon Borough councillor herself. Here's a picture of Maddie Henson with a chap called Joel Bodmer. He's nicknamed Bodger. That's good, isn't it? A man given access to alleg allegedly to the membership data before the selection process was opened in a clear breach of Labour Party rules. And he's one of the candidates, by the way. And here's another picture of Maddie Henson, this time with the aforementioned suspended Tony Newman. So we have a non-voter being blamed for the corruption, at least in part, that we're seeing, having been awarded the Labour Party contract for online voting without any tendering process, run by Mark Henson, who is one of the London Labour's appointed investigators into the alleged voter fraud, and his wife Maddie, who can be tied both to, to both one of the people implicated in the alleged wrongdoing and a suspended former councillor implicated in the financial collapse of Croydon Borough Council. Let's tie all these threads together now by asking at this point, finally, given the title of this video, where does Labour's General Secretary David Evans fit into this? Well, Croydon is Evans's home turf, and the connection here is through Tony Newman, who's pally with both the Hensons and the Evans. His old mate Evans, as he called him, when he supported him to become Labour General Secretary. Knowing that is quite reasonable to look at this and ask questions of Evans in relation to an honour voter. Did he know it was a dodgy as hell system, as one other Labour candidate described it? It's been blamed up and down the country for voting issues. But was Evans involved in the awarding of this contract without tender? It's not an unreasonable question to ask, given his position and given his friendship with Tony Newman, and, that, and the fact that friendship ties him to the Hensons, at least on paper. Even the Labour Party NEC was bypassed over the non voter contract, and you have to realise the implication of every Labour Party member in the country having their details to cast democratic votes being on this system. If the system is corrupt, if it is able either in and of itself or through manipulation, 
To be able to act in a factional or selective manner, it is utterly unfit for purpose. And why it was ever given the contract for this to start with will come into serious spotlight and needs serious examination. If the General Secretary was involved in the awarding of this contract, and it is pretty hard to see how he could not have knowledge of such a massive internal deal, he could well be knowingly implicated in such things. And that absolutely needs investigating. That London Labour have appointed one of the people behind a non-voter to investigate what has happened in Croydon is an absolute joke. As for Maddie Henson, she's hoping to be elected to the London Assembly next. As a, re as a result of the corruption alleged in Croydon East, though, selection of Labour candidates for the Greater London Authority has now had to be suspended too. Are you convinced any wrongdoing will be found here? I'm not. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Please like, share and subscribe if you did more content up daily. Please do have your say on this story in the comments below and be part of the conversation. Meanwhile, here's a video recommendation where if the fish rots from the head, the localised issues like this, not the first and unlikely to be the last under the Starmer regime, can only end with the removal of Starmer himself. Perhaps you're the person to stand against him and do so, in which case, because everything is in place for the right candidate, courtesy of anti-Starmer group Okita, from organisers to the necessary cash. And I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.